Welcome back to Northern Moderation and today's episode of the Professional Amateurs. With me today I've got Tracy, I've got my dad Brad, I've got Joey Reed, a buddy of mine from college. As promised, we are going to show you why it's important to smoke slow. Kentucky Bourbon Barrel Ale. Great drink to go with cigars. We have two Old Foresters today. We have the 100 proof straight bourbon and we have their rye. Outstanding. We have Larceny, which is a great dollar value uh, for your smoke. We have from a local brewery in Bartersville, Indiana, the Taxman Deduction. It's a Belgium based inspired beer. Taxman, worth the visit. Very good. And another local place we have in southern Indiana, Starlight, Indiana, by New Albany. At the Huber uh, Starlight Distillery, we have a bottle of high rye bourbon that Bo and I spent a great amount of time picking out. We bought the barrel, had a private label with our logo on it, and it's a nice giveaway to customers and a way to say thank you to people that are just truly dear to us. For today's cigars, we're all going to be smoking Brickhouse Connecticut Connecticut's. Personally, it's my favorite cigar. From start to finish, it is a phenomenal smoke. It's light, mild, and full of flavor. And now for our actual science experiment. We've got our two unfortunate guys who are going to have to smoke these cigars extremely fast. Okay, so decide who gets to smoke slow and who gets to smoke fast. We're going to play a good old fashioned game of rock, paper, scissors. We have to smoke these cigars extremely fast. Lab rats. We've got our lab rats. Every 13 seconds, my phone is going to ding. When that phone dings, those two have to smoke. Now, if you've ever okay, so we're talking science, right? And we're just all about science. And I think science is well and good, right? It, it, it's proven, it's factual. Well, let me give you some facts. I know what happened when they put those chips in the cages. Because I know the planet of the apes. I've been watching them my whole life. And that's science. And when we break out, and we scale the buildings, and we terrorize people, that's not our fucking fault. Science. <laughs> if you've ever smoked a cigar really fast, or just fast, you know that it starts to get hot, it starts to taste bad. It's just not an enjoyable experiment. Makes you want to climb a building and terrorize people. So when these guys reach that point, they're going to really make them smoke even longer. Torture. We're going to torture and make them smoke longer. When they reach that point, they're going to raise their hand. We're going to take the temperature of all of our cigars. Correctly, of course. We're going, to, we're going to take the temperature of our cigars and we're going to record it. Then we're going to take these pins, we're going to pin down all of our cigars, and we're going to dissect them. And we're going to look at the tobacco on the inside of the cigar and how the burn pattern goes. But no animals will be hurt during this film. No animal. These four cigars, though, these are great cigars, we're about to lose all of them. That's, that is something incredible. All of our cigars are lit. Their 13 second timer starts now. There goes mine. Damn. Check out these results. 
we have 142 degrees here, 137 here. Those were our fast smokers. Take that down, almost cut in half at 77 degrees and 78 degrees. We enjoyed these cigars. These two, they looked miserable the whole time. And we were. <laughs> and they were. The first thing that pops out at me is look at this filler. See how loose that is? Th that's decomposed, degraded. It looks horrible. The filler on these guys, the ones we were enjoying, they're still intact. It cut really nice. These were hard to cut through. I felt like the cigar was going to fall apart between my fingers. The burn, we've got a nasty burn. It's dark all the way through the middle. The light, the, the contrast or the color difference between the inside of this cigar and the inside of these. Remember, these are the same cigars. This is our constant. These are my favorite cigars to smoke. My absolute favorite cigar and there were two complete different experiences right here. Well, thankfully, Bo let me out of the cage and now it's time to enjoy a cigar I love. Now today, I brought a gift over to the boys. It's a My Father Selection 2012 number one cigar. Uh, we'll get to those later, it's a great smoke. But I have my travel humidor with me today, which I like to bring around some of my favorites. Today I want to start with a Man of War Rumination. Now this is a fantastic cigar, it's a box press. I'll go into it later, but it's about an hour and 30 to an hour and 45 minute cigar. It's not that long, but I'm going to smoke it properly. And what I mean properly is I'm going to enjoy it. It doesn't matter what your brand name is, it doesn't matter what it's rated. If you love the cigar, enjoy it. Smoke it with your buddies, so you have good conversation, good drinks, you can talk about things you love, like good times, good friends, right to fight. Alright, now let's talk about these guys right here. Joe, you were you made it at 142 degrees. Dad, you were at 137 degrees when you laid this thing down. Um, I should have been hotter than Joe. I don't know how that happened, but I should have. What, what did you guys think? So, let, let, let's start from the beginning. When you lit up your cigar, how was it? Well, it was a good Brickhouse Connecticut cigar. I mean, I tried to do a proper light. I think I got a proper light in it. It, was, it started out really nice. This would be a nice, mild cigar. Joey, this was your... This is your first brick house, right? Yes. First brick house, again, my personal favorite cigar. What did you think of it at, at first taste? At first taste, I thought it was absolutely fantastic. I thought the earthy tones were there, hint of leather, spices, I thought it was great. Now, what about the 15? Where when did this thing, when did the enjoyment go away? Well, <laughs> the fact that I was forced to take a smoke. That's right away. I mean, you knew I was going to be just like kicking and screaming. I, I don't do well with rules. <laughs> and, you know, telling me when to puff, first off, got under my skin. But after we did it for a little bit, I'm like, this is kind of bullshit because I'm not enjoying the smoke. I'm simply puffing. What'd you taste? Big way through, you know. So when you got to, you know, right here on your cigar, what did you taste? You said you liked the beginning. Two, three minutes into it, what was the flavor then? What, how did it change? I definitely tell the flavor started to dissipate immensely, and that the heat was finally taking over the body of the cigar as it was traveling through, and the taste started to fade away. You know, and it's funny, my, my taste was gone. And my taste was gone more so maybe mentally. Again, I don't smoke to get through a cigar, okay? Most of the time, when I do something, it's to get to the end. The journey's whatever. But that's not true with me. I like the journey and everything. And the journey in a cigar is smoking a cigar and enjoying every bit of it. And I was pissed. I, honest to God, I was pissed. It's just not fucking fun at all. And so I'm just huffing. I got no flavor whatsoever. I got no enjoyment. In fact, from being relaxed, I went to uptight. Uptight to the point like, you know, this is bullshit, I'm done. But I didn't quit. Thank you for that. Now, now you, you started mentioning taste and heat. Uh, what did it feel like in your mouth? Oh, I got start to end. Yeah, I, I got heat really early. And, and heat beating, as, as you're smoking a cigar, as you pull in, 
if you shut your eyes, you shouldn't feel the flame coming towards you. When do you normally put your cigar down? When you're smoking a cigar that you enjoy, and you put that down, like, I'm done with this cigar, when do you decide that? What's the well, factor on that? I put a cigar down when I get heat in my mouth. And normally that doesn't happen towards the end. And the better the cigar, obviously, the longer I get to do it. But when I get a hot mouth, I'm done. I'm, I'm done enjoying it. So I put it down probably earlier than I did five, six years ago. I would try to fight through it a little bit because there's still good tobacco in there. There's still some flavor. And you paid for that. And I, and I paid for it. I didn't pay for this one, so I put it down real quick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joey. First Brickhouse, not obviously not as an experienced smoker as that. What did the heat feel like? Where did you feel the heat? Was it your tongue, the roof of your mouth? You know. Spirit, talk us through the heat experience. So to piggyback off of Brad, absolutely, it just, most of the flavor went away. The heat experience hit the tip of the tongue to begin with, for me personally, and then as that continued, I started to enjoy it less and less and less. But as the heat came through, everything was absolutely bitter. And it started to become, like I just said, um, joyful, not as eventful. The smoke started to actually overtake and then, oh, the smoke was horrible. Smoke was actually horrible. That's what we were talking about. Did, was, the the smoke, smoke, was, was the smoke hot itself, or just or did you have heat? Yeah. Right, freaking sneezed. No, <laughs> the smoke was just it, it was just annoying. You know, and and I don't even we smoke. We play poker, or you know, not for real money. That's not true. <laughs> we play nickels and dimes, and it raises seventy five cents. Anybody in a buddy game of poker? That raises more than 75 cents, and you're leaving my buddies out there. You're an asshole. You're being a dick. <laughs> uh, but, but no, really, the smoke was so much, the smoke was wrong. Like, oh my God, this is this is unenjoyable. I'm sneezing. We're, we're dealing with smoke. We're dealing with just puffing and puffing. We can't get a drink of alcohol. Exactly. Can't say anything witty. Not once. <laughs> and, and we're witty. Absolutely. <laughs> we're witty. All right, talk about your burn. Now, we, 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 we compared burns a little bit on that. What did the burn of your cigars, your guys' cigars do? It looked like shit. It looked, your cigars looked like No, shit. it did. And I'm not making, okay, yeah, I'm making fun of Joe a little bit. But you had this whole, uh, the whole canoeing. You had a whole <laughs> side going, going nuts up. And it, it, it's hard to, and I, you don't spin. No, I don't. At least I'm, I'm, I still spin. I'm trying to, you know, we don't have much airflow here, but I spin and try to keep it even. Uh, little tricks you learn. But it wasn't the burn. Honestly, goodness, the burn, I was, my filler, or my binder, excuse me, was getting burned a lot more than my filler. Uh, that was obvious. But it was it was miserable in the sense of, again, trying to smoke that fast. No flavor. No enjoyment. All smoke. All heat. All right, Tracy. This is not your first brick house. No. No. Uh, and we both got to enjoy this cigar. I, to, what did you experience? Talk me through your experience. Remember, guys, this is, we all smoke the same exact cigar. The same amount of time. The cigar I was smoking was just getting to where the flavor was getting good. I was getting into more of the leather and, and woody flavors that come out of that cigar when you smoke it. You know, I was just getting started when I had to put it out. Because, <laughs> because your cigar that, was a, that was a big disappointment. Because because of science. 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 <laughs> science. Damn science. Uh, your, your, your burn, your experience, what was the best part of the experience? For me, it was watching them. <laughs> 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 Our pain is there in front of it. That's right. So, you talked about you were just getting to the section of a cigar that, that's the best part. Take me through, well, what do you mean by that? Most of your flavors from the cigar come from the body, which is like the middle two thirds of the cigar. Once you get past the foot, you get everything burning good and even. And before you get to the head and the shoulder where it starts to go away because of the heat. But the body of your cigar is where you get most of your flavors from. And I was just getting into that part when we clicked because they clicked. <laughs> Quitters. <laughs> we tried, we tried to quit earlier. Quitters did our best. <laughs> All right, well, uh, thank you guys for being good sports. Let's uh, let's enjoy these smokes a little bit more uh, and drink some more. And, uh, yeah, cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye.
So if you watched our first episode of How to Smoke a Cigar, uh, we took five takes, and in those five takes, and step five was what? And step five was how to relight your cigar. Uh, we took five takes of the step four, and after enjoying a lot of good bourbon, uh, we bypassed and forgot to talk about how to relight your cigar. We're fortunate right now, Tracy just ran into that, and uh, he's gonna take us through how to relight your cigar. I'm ready to go for my relight now. I've knocked all the old ash off. Doesn't blow through my trash, but I'm still smoking my cigar. And basically, I'm gonna do the same thing I did when I lit the first time. I'm gonna toast it, keep your foot up again, get it all nice and toasty and warm, ready to go. Once I get there. Sometimes you don't need a full relight, you just need some more heat. You're starting to get a little cold on your cigar. And you get your torch back out, and I like to light the torch away from my mouth, just to get the edges, just to get the binder and the wrapper a little heated back you up. Say away from your mouth, what do you mean? So my mouth is here, at the back of the cigar, at the head of the cigar. Okay. And so I'm gonna get my flames going towards the foot. Because I don't want to drive the heat back down into the filler. I've got a good thing going there. So I'm just going to put a little heat back here on the outside. I'm not going to puff it in. I'm just getting that warm back up. Now without the flame. I'll go back to join my cigar. And so there's reheating, which is what I did. Tracy had to relight. And I'm going to tell you something. It's not a fault if you have to relight or reheat. It's a matter of just enjoying smoking a cigar and no one's keeping score. And if they are, he needs his ass beat. It's better to relight your cigar than to smoke fast like you guys did earlier. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> that was absolutely terrible. <laughs> talking earlier, and Bo talked about a one inch ash, and I want to take a minute to talk about an, an ash. And as you can see right here, I've got a decent long ash. And I've read books, and I, I'm a book reader. And I can find a book that says, ash a lot, make a long ash. If the longer your ash, the more you insulate the burn, eventually you're gonna lose your heat. When you lose that heat, you're gonna you have to relight it. Some, some heat is good. Too right. much yeah. Right, it's right in between. That's and, right there. Yeah, and too quick, too quick, you're just, you're knocking the shit out of your cigar, and that's not good either. My rule has become, after reading and experiencing, if I'm in the fanciest cigar lounge or bar I've ever been in, okay, where we're at a coat and tie, I don't wear a tie though, but if we're, we're in a coat and we're, we're feeling all good about ourselves and I don't have my tour hat on, I got actually a nice hat on, you know, they don't match, nice time. But the key is, if you ash on the floor of that place, you're a douche. So we are at Burn right now, and, and this is a nice cigar lounge, one of our favorites, and I do have an ash going. Uh, about an inch long. In the past, and everyone will will have this experience where this falls on the floor and you are that douche. But right now I know it, I'm experienced, so I'm going to simply take this onto this ashtray, tap it right there. I controlled the ash, I kept my cigar a good burn, I'm gonna enjoy this and I'm not gonna you know, cause any any upset, in it, or I'm not gonna upset anyone here at this cigar lounge, so. Ash on that floor. Bye. And so that's where I gauge my ash. And right now, if I take another puff, I'm afraid I'm gonna drop this down my new shirt and make it a mess. So I get an ash about here, and when you start to feel, oh yeah, it could be a little loose, so I just tap it. I'm not a roller, they'll talk about rolling, but I'll tap it on the side. Now something Bo and I talked the other night in one of my smoking rooms at home. I've got a spiral on mine. And if you get to the point you've got just that you got a shitty burn going on, that spiral allows you to pull it and clean it off. Hey, thanks for joining us today. We are the professional amateurs. We hope you enjoyed our experiment today. Uh, we learned a lot, and as you can see, smoking slow is important. It's all about the experience. If you smoke fast, you're gonna ruin your experience. 
big shout out and thank you, Tracy as always. But to those two, uh, our, as we call them, our lab rats, uh, they took one for the team today, uh, but I think it was well worth it. And in all seriousness, and this isn't overly serious, the whole point when we started smoking cigars was to enjoy the flavor, but more so to enjoy the camaraderie and the time and the drinks and the stories. And these guys make a lot of shit up, I don't. But the point was to enjoy your time. And to enjoy your time, you've got to smoke a cigar at a pace that allows you to focus on the conversation and enjoyment of the flavor. If you have to focus on this thing, then you're missing. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, share us with your friends, and put anything you would like to see us cover in the comments. Uh, we've had great feedback so far. Let's keep this rolling. we got a lot more for you. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Cheers to bottom. Bottom of bottom.